If you're a man, you don't cry about it. You take life, the ups and downs. If you're a real man, you never go down, you just stay up. That's why this sport coat costs $800 and that costs $200. And I don't know what that costs, I'd be ashamed to wear it. That's why I'm wearing lizard shoes and a Rolex watch. Important it, snorting it, any competition extorting it. Anything I want, affording it. Got enough crack to get four to hit. Turn a saint to a sinner, lose to a winner. Whether old school or a beginner, my shit's the best. Rick's the best. Have your heart beating right out your chest. That Rick Flair like. Woo! That Rick Flair like. Woo! This is all I do. I got that Rick Flair like. Woo! Woo! Styling, profiling. That Ricky Mickey girl go. Woo! Welcome to the Goblin and Ogre podcast. You've reached. You've re- Sorry. All right, let's go back. Take, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. You've reached the Goblin and Ogre. <laughs> I was trying to say we're not a podcast. We're an um, entertainment company. An entertainment company. Yes. I like that yeah. because of our, our pending events. We have one past event. Yeah. Really sad that we've only had one past event. We've discussed so many. Uh, just a lot of them don't really happen. Because <laughs> no follow we're through, lazy. yeah, no fault of my own. <laughs> I think we're both just the boxing match. Like we had, like such motivation for it because we just want to see Charlie get punched by by Jake. You know, like the, regardless of whoever won that fight, we just want. I just wanted to see Charlie get punched right in his <laughs> stupid, stupid noggin, marshmallowy pink face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not just that; it's that uh, we had Jake Halsey was really pushing that forward. He had the gym, he had the thing. Um, we have a great producer idea man, um, Ian, um, who's thrown me a couple of ideas that you you don't even know about yet. Uh, one, he he actually he wanted to be here for the podcast today, but he's on his farm right now, his family farm, and he would love. I noticed. I'm he's really like raising chickens and cropping fields. He's, he's yeah. Do, he's doing. He's, he's doing actual man yeah, shit. Yeah. Stuff your people were born to do. Right. <laughs> well, that's what we were given. <laughs> we were given. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were born to chop off heads and throw them down pyramid steps. Exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> pyramid. Um, but yeah, no, he's he's on his family farm, and but he did bring up a great idea, and I know we're not supposed to produce on the podcast, but I just want to tell you, but I'm so excited about it. Is we go to his family farm. We're gonna do a podcast on the farm outside, which we love to. We could do a pit cast, but not at the Christie Pitts pit, but uh, you know, whatever his own pit. And he's gonna let us shoot guns. Just you saying we're gonna record on a farm already is already. Yeah. I love that idea. Um, I don't know. Like my favorite thing about our podcast, or sorry, our our, our program, is. The backgrounds, like you just never know, you know where <laughs> where we'll be. Where we might be with you yeah. <laughs> in so, your home. That on top of shooting guns, dude, I'm all for so, it. So uh, that th- should be our regular spot. Oh, you could you imagine all our episodes start with us blasting a shotgun <laughs> in the air, <laughs> like in the crow? Fire it up! Fire it up! <laughs> You've reached a Goblin Ogre podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the camera! <laughs> like, what are you fucking idiot! Like, what are you? Like, I'll carry it away. Trust me, the intro will be good. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get his girlfriend to hold our phone <laughs> at the film. Got to get all the buckshot out of the, yeah, yeah. Out of the lens. <laughs> be fine. Um, yeah, no, uh, I'm very excited about that. I've I've only shot guns. Have you shot guns before? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've I've sh- one time. I've shot guns in Vegas. Well, like the outskirts of Vegas. We were in Pennsylvania for the Sharks uh, bachelor party. Bachelor party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that thing you do before you ruin your life? Uh, shoot guns, <laughs> n- not fuck whores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. Like we were um, supposed to go to a strip club that night. Yeah, yeah. But Vince hit, or the Shark, whatever, all his like his brother-in-laws or whatever, his um, his wife's his family. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But when it came time, like, all right, man, let's go to the strip club. All of them were like, I'm, ki- I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I don't want to go. I love my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> and all these guys were so, like, first, like, yeah, it's going to be yeah, great. Yeah, they were all in. And right when it came time to pull the trigger, they were just like, 
Nah. I don't trust you, myself. You, oh, <laughs> which makes you look more like a piece of shit. Yeah. I if say just like, go. I can't go to a strip club. You know, my wife will be mad. You don't know what. She she doesn't know what happens there. Your wife should know what happens there, yeah. which is if you're a good married man, nothing. Nothing. You, you just looked at some girls. You looked had some, some beers, laughed, left. But, you know, yeah. he's definitely going to be getting he'll be getting some lap dances and sucking on used nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking on used nipples. <laughs> it's accurate, but yeah. sad. It kind of makes me sad. Hey, did you hear about Trump? Oh, yeah. I just saw it on the thing. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, um, well, I'm very sad that he might be going to jail. Yeah. That bugs me. Uh, I was always going to be rooting for that man. But he comes out with a statement and the first words out of his mouth. That was a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Mexican people in this spirit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that was, well, yeah. look, I'm, I'm in general uh, in the thought pattern of like he's, he's, a, he's a dumb guy. You know, I'm sure he does some so. good things. I don't think so. No, I think he's a dumb guy. You think stupid? I think most of them are stupid, though. Well, it's not like isolated I to him. I think people are just dumb in general. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even what's his face in the wheelchair? Uh, Steve Hawking's yeah, yeah, yeah. supposed to be the smartest guy alive, and he's a pedophile. <laughs> Those are some dumb mean? people. <laughs> Those are the smartest people I know. <laughs> They're I'm very focused, saying. driven. <laughs> yeah, some of them run great podcasts, and <laughs> so I'm saying that's just the great big flaw of uh, of, pe- of humans yeah, 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 yeah. is that no matter how high your IQ is. Dude, we could be dumb as shit, man. Like, Everybody's smart in some things and dumb in other things. And I do think Trump is dumb in some things, right? But I think he's, like, dumbed down by his own ego. But overall, I do think he's smart in other things. Like, I think he's shrewd. You remember that word? Shrewd? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, like, a shrewd... It, like, he can read people. He can, like, you know... He figure out. He can figure out who's being an asshole to him and stuff like that. Like, I don't think he's all around stupid. But I think I, he's a brilliant guy. I think he all around has an idea of what's going on around him. I just think the media treats him or, or him. like they portray they put out shit to make him look like an idiot they they put him way out of context and everything so you got a bunch of morons like zombie headed people who yeah, just yeah, yeah. watch the news and just believe it for what it is and uh, for what they present but i think you know i think he's a very uh, intelligent businessman i'm pretty sure if we talk to him just like guys yeah yeah, yeah. you'd be like this is no. an impressive fucking dude. Like, yeah, he's I wouldn't funny. think he's stupid. Yeah, no, I, no, I wouldn't think. He, I don't think he's. Dumb. I wouldn't think he's stupid. But I think, he, I think he's arrogant. His arrogance. Arrogance. That's what I mean. Like his ego, his arrogance may come across as who does this guy think he is? Yeah, you know what I mean. Because I suffer with that. It's not. <laughs> I know <laughs> people think that about you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you dress like Mr. Dress Up? What are you wearing? Oh, this you don't, patch jacket. You don't like my safari coat? <laughs> <laughs> That's, in the Charlie podcast, you truly shocked me oh, yeah. when we finished it. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, I got to go. And you put on a duster and, <laughs> and sunglasses. A duster? Which a one? duster is like a, it's, it's like a long <laughs> coat. Like it's oh, like, like a trenchy coat? Yeah, trench yeah, yeah. coat type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my style. <laughs> That's your style? I'm going with active shooter. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. All right. Sniper. Um, yeah, no, no. I think it's not just that. It's his arrogance that makes him say things out of like emotion or whatever at the time. That That's what I think makes him look dumb sometimes mm-hmm. is he's like shooting. You know, you know that term shooting from the hip? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he just does that a little bit and that makes him like seem dumb. I'm not suggesting he's actually like mentally retarded. Or anything so you mean because like I do this sometimes or I've done a lot. It's just like you're, you're speaking way ahead before you have a formulated thought. Like, yeah. Like you're already in the middle of like saying something you're like, oh, shit. I got to finish this. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Like, or, I, got, I got too, I, like, I get too ahead of myself. Or he says things without fully thinking. Is that a good thing to say right. at the time? Right. Because I think it's just all going to come out fluidly and yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then halfway through, I'm like, I don't know where this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to wrap it up quick. And I think that's, like, why I just end things with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know who else, like, I think, I think we also think people are dumb and we think other people are smart. Like I'll, I'm gonna flip something. I'm gonna flip something to people that I think need to be not flipped in that the dumb person I don't think is whatever. 
is I think underratedly, George Bush was not a fucking idiot. He wasn't a dumb guy. He was maybe in control of the powers around him, you know, the the Rumsfelds and the Cheneys and stuff like that. Um, but like you watch him talk, he doesn't give off dumb. Like, you know, there's some people in your life, you talk to them and you're like, I like this person, but they're dumb. You know, I know they're not quick off their feet. They're not, you know. That's interesting because I always looked at Bush like dumb. I th- like the, I the like he was, and I don't even think the media was trying to present him that way. Uh, be- ever since like, and because of nine eleven, they try to seem they try to make him seem more like, oh, you know, the president that yeah, was yeah, there yeah. during nine eleven okay. and sat through a book. Like like <laughs> sat through a children's story yeah. while the nation was under attack. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go. I don't think they were trying to like show present him as an idiot. I think he he just he's well, like a Biden. Like well, Biden. It, yes, he has that vibe to him. I get that. Um, but it depends what side you're talking about. Like the 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 more like you know CNN whatever MSNBC side saw him as a fucking idiot and then Fox was like oh he's smart I think he was just somewhere in the middle he wasn't dumb he wasn't probably not smart enough to be like the leader of one of the most powerful countries in the world yeah 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 but he wasn't dumb like dumb is a strong word that we use and then someone who is smart I know is smart I know but I've decided I can't fucking stand him and I will skip any videos with him in it I I avoid them. I will dislike them. I'll put a thumbs down. Neil deGrasse Tyson oh, makes me bugs me. fucking yeah, that, that sick. Guy, yeah, that guy's nice. Oh, he's the worst. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, really? Hey. That's all I hear. When he talks, to explain smart things to fucking dumb people, and he's like, "Oh, it's like the, if I hear that clip one more time of." If a, if a if a giant put his finger across the earth and it would be smoother than a cue ball of a fuck shut the oh, fuck up you dummy I can't stand him because yeah, he's yeah, trying to I explain saw, yeah. how mountains and stuff They're is not smooth. actually that high it's smooth yeah, yeah the earth is fairly smooth shut the fuck up <laughs> shut up I can't stand him and he has he's like a scientist with like political ideas and stuff so he inserts that a little bit too shut up yeah you're not smart. And also, also, I don't care what anyone says. He's intelligent in one thing. He's he's an astrophysicist. I do think he talks out of his ass on other things. Yeah. That he maybe he's read. He is smart, so I guess he can read them and understand them better than me. But like he'll talk about like biology or something like that. And I'm like, you didn't spend your life studying that. Yeah. Fuck you. I don't know. He he just looks like a. You, you like how boxers in the 19 black boxers in the 1940s <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Was, i just want to see him get punched in the throat yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mike tyson fucking don king jr looking piece of shit although apparently he was a wrestler like uh neil degrasse tyson yeah he was an amateur wrestler he was uh well he's a big guy you don't realize it but he's like a he's i like guess a, like neil degrasse is a great bo- like fighter name in yeah, a sense. yeah 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 it is Neil the Grass Tyson. Put you on the Grass Tyson. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kneel down before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, no, I don't uh, know. He just. I, bugs I, I me. agree. That guy's that guy's an, an idiot to me. I miss. I miss. There was a pre Neil the Grass Tyson who kind of got pushed to the wayside, but I think he's also he's autistic, so he doesn't like he doesn't care about the limelight as much. But there was a guy named uh, Doctor Mishu Kaku. And yeah, I yeah, think and Dr. I know, I know of him. Yeah, I, Dr. Kaku, way smarter than Neil deGrasse Tyson, way more likable, even though he's uh, he's clearly he's suffering from autism. He's got a David Suzuki thing. Yeah, about yeah, him. yeah. David yeah. Suzuki. He's Asian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he does, though. He does. He does have a David I'm just joking, but he does have a David Suzuki feel. You know what it is? is um, they have that gentle approach mm-hmm. where they're just like, oh, you know, like everything is like, like, it almost it almost is reminiscent of like a, a like a like a, like a, a TV a, a a child's TV show host. Hey, you know, yeah, look at yeah. this. Hey, look at it this way. And blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't that wonderful? Like, like that that way of communicating. Neil deGrasse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is just he's pompous, revolting. He's yeah. revolting. He's, revolting. he's yeah. revolting. He's the yeah. worst. Um, speaking of like sciencey stuff, did you did you listen to the Terrence Howard uh, Rogan podcast? No. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Do you know about Terrence Howard? 
how he's blowing everyone's mind. He's, with- well, he, Terrence Howard's uh, <laughs> dick is so small, so he compensates it with by, by trying to be like a scientist. <laughs> I thought it was because they wouldn't pay him what he wanted on Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> there was that too. <laughs> I heard on Hustle and Flow he made like $600 or something well, like that. Okay, that was an MTV movie. I think they uh, used to like actually pay people very little. Like I think even uh, Napoleon Dynamite was an MTV movie. Yeah. Got paid very little. So that was like a thing. They were kind of like... Whatever. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. But he's made. Look, he's rich. He's made money off of like other movies he's been in. I think even just off of his payment in uh, Iron Man One, I think it's enough to like live your life. How do you feel about the idea of uh, the payment is exposure? Like, oh yeah. yeah like if yeah. ever you get like, yeah, like oh, am I gonna get paid or anything? Well, no. But the exposure. But what if you don't do anything with the exposure? Now you're just famous no, and no. broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're still like poor, but people recognize you. Yeah, there's a lot of that in like in comedy, um, but also I guess, I guess in the rest other industries is the idea of exposure. Like, oh, you'll be, you'll be we'll open you up to a to a whole audience. I mean, that's how we pay but, our comedians. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. Two thousand on TikTok, you know, whatever. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's it's a that's one of those things that's not a scam until you're big enough that it's a scam. Right, right, right. Then you go like, I don't need, I don't need exposure yeah. any more exposure. There comes a point where you're overexposed. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So that in itself is just like, if I do your show, it's a favor. I'm yeah, doing a yeah, favor. Yeah. It's like I like you. We're 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 buddies like that. But you know, like you can't. Th- that only really works with you know up and coming people that. Should get recognition, but don't. Yeah. So you yeah. go. That's how you can. Oh, you know, it's Joe Rogan podcast because I see Rogan has had like a lot of guests because his clips come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see somebody who's who's on IG talking to Rogan, and I don't know who the fuck that is. Sure. But it's Joe Rogan's podcast. You would think that I would know, even though I don't really listen to it. But I'm yeah. like, it's such a big enough thing. And even if I saw that guy at a restaurant at the table next to me, I wouldn't recognize. I w- I wouldn't remember that he was on. Rogan's uh, podcast talking about, you know, intergalactic, you know, sort of like interdimensional beings or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't remember him. No, no, no. It mostly bleeds into nothing. Um, I do. I don't even know. Like, I know people talk about like his podcast, like, oh, it's the next Carson or whatever. Um, but also, there's kind of a, there's kind. Of, I think there's a little sour on the Joe Rogan comedians or whatever. So I don't even know if what like do you mean? a little sour. There, are, people are kind of like, uh, they're in their not really funny stage, mm. which I don't think is true for all of them. But a li- there's a little, there's like a little bit of Segura, that. Segura, Burt Kreischer, yeah, Mark Norman, Ari Shafir. I'll stand, I'll stand behind Ari Shafir. Um, I think Mark Norman, besides Josh and False Thoughts, are is pretty funny. <laughs> The rest have used to been kind of funny and now are just very okay. Right. And there's just going through a bit of that. And also Cat Williams, he goes, Joe Rogan will have on five non-funny comedians before he has me on. <laughs> <laughs> and it made people go, that's unfair, but also. I mean, if it's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <coughs> it's fair if it's true. It's fair if it's true. And it's kind of true. Uh, yeah, there's a little, especially when it comes to uh, Tom Zagura and Bert, they're kind of like not well liked in the online sphere. Sure, I, right I don't now. even understand why exactly. I mean, I I'm not the biggest fan of either of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the, the sort of like oh, like hatred that I kind of witness a little bit about them. I'm like, where does that come from? Like, why so, do they? Yeah, I'll tell you. I had a friend who was the first. Per- I'll give it to him as credit. He was the first person to like voice this dislike of him and he used to really like those two guys mostly tom segura right and i remember the first time he voiced it it was along the lines of they were enjoying their money too out in the open too much um it, almost in a way that they're becoming uh, uh like what's flaunting it? less yeah flaunting less down to earth and also less cognizant of how poor people are around. So they were making jokes about, oh, you poor people or whatever. But and I, I think they're joking. But it, I think it was that little seed that when my friend said that, he was one of those people that was watching and starting to go, 
Uh, mm. I don't know. And then it just built, and now it's like there's just people who used to fuck with them that don't anymore. I guess like if you kind of portray that I'm rich now, you know, all the rest of you are peasants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're mediocre, like, and you're not as funny. Because yeah, let's yeah. say you're hilarious. Like if Shane Gillis was doing shit like that, I think Shane Gillis is funny enough yeah. to to get away with it. Because, you know, he started off, uh, everybody knows his story, like fucking yeah, yeah. black ball at first and, you know, came back on his own. And, and, and now he's like a proven hilarious guy. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I started watching that show Tires. Tires. I start, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. It's um, not like... Oh, it's, it's not it's like cool. it, it's, it's not cool. like, it's not like groundbreaking shit, no, but no, it's, no, funny. No. it's funny. It's funny enough to just watch and yeah, enjoy. Yeah. It's kind of him being him, so that's the best part. Like that's the gayest thing I've ever said. <laughs> I just like it because it's him being him. That is really fucking gay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of douche my, I heard it. I heard it like out loud when it came out in of your my headphones. Mouth. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a problem. It comes yeah. back in here, and I'm like, ooh, ooh. ooh. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a pretty good show. Also, to be fair. I think his personality, it would be weird to see him like enjoying his money in a flaunty way. But that's what would make it funny. True. Shane Gillis with his personality, yeah, yeah. like being this like, hey, you know, I'm rich now because I have a thing. I think that combination would be hilarious. So he might be able to get away with it because I think he's that funny. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura, I don't know. Like, like maybe their friend is right. It just came across as like just it's douchey, douchey. Yeah. yeah 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 so eh, whatever i mean but then again like at some point everybody who has like a big fan base a big loyal fan base at some point you lose them you like they all turn on you like, at some point it's just inevitable they're all gonna turn on you it there's no winning forever even i'll say this prior to louis ck's blackballing his own i still I had started being like, oh, his last special, uh, it's just okay. It was like you get fatigue from almost anything. And you just, I don't know, it's a natural inclination that you want to turn on something that you used to like. Like, have you ever heard uh, Noel Gallagher from Oasis? Uh, he got mad at his fans because he started getting that, those like hearing about stuff like, oh, you know, oh, we used to, we were like his day ones and we used to, f- you know, be big fans and now they're this big band and we don't like them anymore. And he's like, he apparently, I'm paraphrasing, but he goes, fuck you. Your love got me to this place and now you're not happy I'm there. Right. It's that whole like, oh, but this was our thing. It was yeah, like, yeah. like people want to like find something special and then like hide it in their closet and only like have it for themselves. And then once that shit kind of goes out and your mom is listening to it and it's in her closet and your sister's listening, it's yeah, in her. Yeah. And now everybody is now like sharing the, sh- the same joy or whatever that yeah, you yeah. used to sort of like harbor for yourself. Then they go like, well, I guess it's not that great. No. And it spoils it. It does. Once, spoil once it becomes it. too like if if I started seeing everybody wearing safari jackets. <laughs> <laughs> Like they fucking suck. You're safe. I think you're safe. I don't, I don't think you're gonna run into fucking <laughs> many people wearing sunglasses, pirates hats, and safari glasses. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous of that hat though. I really like that hat. It better not become a thing. <laughs> but it's true. It's it's just like uh, if you. I think on the most basic way I can understand it is if you found. Uh, a painting like you were at some bar and they're like oh yeah it's a local artist or whatever and you see that painting and you're like this is so dope how much 200 you're like that's nice you put it up in your place if within two years he's the biggest painter every fuck face that you go to their house they have like copies of the paintings if not the originals everybody's got them everybody's got them it's everywhere they're on t-shirts all of a sudden you're wall looks fucking stupid yeah you look like a poser well you do but like if you have one of the originals and that starts to happen that's when you got to sell it well yeah yeah, yeah. then you're rich so i guess you enjoy hey like this is i got this at a bar when he was a nobody and then somebody's gonna buy like way more than it's actually probably worth and then you could just motherfuck him and be like oh yeah that guy's a fuck banksy he's a hack (laughs) you know just just enjoy the money uh yeah, because once again, things get too popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not cool. They're anymore. not cool anymore. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, no, no. But uh, it, it, it just gets to a weird point where you stop liking. I don't hate those guys, but uh, I just I get over it. I think even even Shane, I could get tired of eventually if they push him too much on me. Like no, if I, he has the show, a couple movies, kind of stuff. It just eventually you kind of. Yeah, I, I never. You care. don't hate them, but yeah, but like I, I didn't care. I don't really care for any of the Joe Rogan comedians oh, or whatever. Yeah. I don't. I didn't. But then again, I'm. You know, as it's been documented on this podcast, I'm not much of a comedy fan. <laughs> 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 I, I was thinking about that the other day. It's just a weird thing. It's I, I, but you're not the only one I've met. But it's just a weird thing to like. Imagine you started a punk band, and then someone was like, "Oh, so you like the Ramones?" And you're like. I never really listened to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'd, be, it'd be weird. Why did you start a punk band then? Well, weirdo? I think it's almost like that could only make sense under like, well, you know, I had a, a cousin who, you know, was, was trying to start something and yeah, yeah, yeah. he liked my voice. And, and then like I just started just singing it. What punk and then I just learned that yeah, I'm yeah. in a punk band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, I yeah, started yeah. like showing me punk records or bands and I just go like I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just have a voice. Do you know what's the most punk thing I've heard of recently? Mm-hmm. I was watching uh one of those like which is something that's fallen out of uh talk a lot, but a vice a little vice documentary. They I think they're in the shithole. Nobody They I, have I, been for a long time. They have been, right? Mm-hmm. I think they were going through like yeah, bankruptcy or something like that. I might be talking on my ass. But anyway, it was a documentary about some I can't remember what country. Uh but it's where it's one of the countries where Islam is like the main as one of the Asian countries where Islam is like the main religion. And they and the punk scene coincides with also being like the anti religious movement. So there's just these guys who are like fucking like <laughs> they're little goofy <laughs> Asians or whatever, and they got their their heads like either in spikes or shaved or whatever. And so they, they're still copying British, like, still copying like British style. skinhead yeah. style, whatever, yeah. right? But um, they're but they're they're so punk, and they get arrested and stuff for doing their shows and stuff, and because they're like the women are fucking and the guys are like singing about anything or whatever like that, which is like not allowed in their country. Yeah. But I'm like that's that is the most punk thing you can be is to be truly anti government and anti. Like, it's so funny. High school, I hung out with the punks or whatever, I, yeah, I, and I, I was picture. some and I was somewhat punkish myself. Sure. But then I realized like the whole idea, like right when I like it, it dawned on me that the whole idea of punk was to be yourself. Yeah. It was to just be like. An individual, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and then is. everybody's got the spiked leather coats, yeah. the the mohawks, the classic fault with punk, and and it just became a style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know people who I haven't talked to in years, but here and there you'll see something about them on social media. Yeah, they're like my age, pushing forty, still dressing punk like punks you know what and it fucking That's gives me hilarious. it gives me the douchiest <laughs> chills like, <laughs> like one thing is like you retain one thing from yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe a fucking little tattoo little, little, or a one, wrist yeah. call, something but you you still matured a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. but they it's 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 embarrassing a little bit okay. but you don't want to tell anybody how to like dress and right whatever, exactly right? but i go like, that's but, not punk no yeah, yeah that's yeah. not punk at all but but what they're doing is, in my mind, not punk either. My version of punk rock, like when I would dress, I would just wear my grandpa's clothing because yeah, yeah, it was yeah. oversized and kind of like That's not weird. punk. You're a hipster. I was the original you, hipster. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it became hipster shit. But I started with that. I was like old yeah, man yeah, yeah. clothing. Um, but yeah, now <laughs> total hipster. <laughs> dude. That's funny. Now, I will say devil's advocate, the opposite, because... Okay, say you have your friend who's totally all punk dressing still. Yeah. Well, if he goes out, he's still like, I'm, you know, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. The opposite also makes me fucking sad, but also makes me realize they were a poser. Mm. Is, did you ever have someone who was like a particular style in high school? And then once the next style hits after high school, you realize they're all in with that and they're, you just realize, oh, they're just... They're, they're, they're a blank along. slate. Yeah. Whatever gets painted onto them, they're they're down with. Like I saw this dude, he was so like baggy pants, like, you know, whatever, like hip hop guy, right? Like he's like, Oh, I'm gonna have the cool hip hop look, everything. He's all in. And then I saw that guy, he happened to go to the same church as me. 
after high school, like I was in university. Yeah. And I saw him with the tightest hipster pants and plaid and whatever. And I'm like, it was just so incongruent with like what he was in high school. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And it made me realize he was a fucking poser and a loser. Right. I mean, it's because it's the safe bet. Like as far as like, like once society dictates what what's like cool or fashionable whatever yeah yeah uh that's the safe bet for a lot of almost like empty people the, empty people that's to what it is. to latch on to so that they could ingratiate themselves with everybody so they seem like normal people i think these are the ones that are that have something removed something a little bit less yeah yeah, yeah. Hu- uh, not human because it's such a human thing to want no, it's a very the hive to mind thing, the, yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, like the, the herd mentality but you're you're grossly not original you're not an individual you you don't know how to like pick apart things and decide how to how to appreciate this yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, ignore yeah. that so you feel a little bit bad but i think it's mostly women that you see do this and yeah. they get away with it like because women? Are the biggest posers in the they world? They fucking suck. They're the biggest posers. I hate copy girls, copycats, whatever. That's dude, women. Fucking Converse, Biters. dude. Converse shoes yeah. used to be just a guy thing. Yeah, yeah. Jean yeah. jackets used to be just a guy thing. Well, I mean, there's a lot of. It really was at one point. It was mostly guys. Sure, right. The only women that you would see with jean jackets back in the day. Is they it's were wearing? 80s, they were. Right? It was their eighties. They were wearing their boyfriend's jacket uh, after hooking up with him. Okay, and wearing that home. That was the only women that wore jean jackets back in the day. Now you see a lot of women dress like men, but it's the it's like a guy thing. Even like plaid and I, men dress like women, and that it's all you know reverse. I mean? Yes. Yeah. Although, don't ask Peru about that. Oh, hey, shout outs, Peru. <laughs> they officially named transgenderism, LGBTQ, all that shit as a mental illness as it is. <laughs> it is. I see men with half beards, long hair, girl earrings, and a skirt walking up and down Toronto just like, yeah, I'm a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a lady. Yeah. I'm like, you're mentally ill and you're disgusting. Like, so shout outs to, to my to people. Peru. Yeah, yeah per- the Peruvian government. Um, has outlawed no no sorry wait i'm going into the wrong no, direction they, they've uh, they, they've the, yeah they've they've said officially uh it's a mental illness to be trans yes which i guess yeah doesn't mean outlaw you can be trans but they're just like oh it's yeah a, oh it's a crazy person it's an it's an oh sorry <laughs> it's a, <laughs> exactly. That's sad it's a psycho yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's a guy eating his shit over there and you're like oh and then there's someone just dressed like a woman Oh, oh, they're the same. <laughs> <laughs> the Peruvian government looks at them as the same. <laughs> if you're a man painting your toenails, it's the same shit as some bum eating, <laughs> eating, eating fucking feces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love Peru. Oh, Peru's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, Gerbil Festival, crazy people. Mm. Um, <laughs> one second. What's that? Okay, hold on. Let me. One second. All right, unpause. This is going to be really annoying to edit out. I have to figure out exactly how long that pause was. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, can, I can laugh now because she doesn't listen to this podcast. My girl just called me. So her, her data on her like phone or whatever, like it, if it... Uh, if she runs out of data, like if she uses it all for the month, it doesn't like stop, but it just goes really low and really slow and you can barely do anything. So it might as well stop, sure. right? She's going to her one of her best friend's daughter's birthday party right now. And she asked me, I was like, do you want me to Uber you? I asked her like right before this or whatever. And she's like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm at home. I'll call my Uber. My data's low, but... The Uber will call. I'll go meet them, and I'm good. She typed in. It's at a restaurant. She typed in the name of the restaurant and uh, just clicked on the first one because it's a cell-phoned restaurant. Okay. There's no others that exist with that name, or so she thought. 
it took her it, the Uber. She gets in the Uber. It's taking her like in some weird area downtown. Mm. So she calls me like basically in tears, being like, "I'm I don't even know where I am. I'm I'm lost, and I don't have any data to call an Uber or yeah, anything yeah, yeah. or whatever." She's like, "Can you please call me an Uber and get me out of here?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, she's just having one of those breakdown moments of like, "Why did I go? I didn't have to like." Yeah. <laughs> okay, so she fucked up. She fucked up. Well, now she she's fucked like up, stranded somewhere. Where she was validly mad is she's like. Uber, the app has no, like, the, she was, I could hear her on the phone with the guy asking, like, is there a way I can, like, fix this, change this? He's like, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, let her, he, <laughs> he let my girlfriend out in the middle. No, get out. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see she's in. So, so she's good now. Sorry about that. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of not funny, but funny to be on the phone with your girl and... And she's like in tears. Yeah. But I am 30 minutes away. There's nothing I could do besides call the Uber. Sure. Or whatever. I think she got in fine. So whatever. But it's <laughs> it's like it's, you want to be like this. Uh, oh, I'm the boyfriend. I will fix things. I kind of want to be on the phone like I got to go back to my podcast. There's nothing I can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you remember like if you're attacked. Yeah. But you remember like the route. This Uber took you. Start walking that route <laughs> in reverse. <laughs> yeah. You know what's really funny though? How brutal the Uber guy was. Yeah. Was he goes? She's like, she's like, I guess she's sitting in his car because she doesn't want to get out. She's like, I don't know where I am. Right? Like, I'm a woman downtown. Like, I don't, you know. <laughs> Come on, Trish. It, Trish, it's broad daylight. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, I know. But she didn't say that to me. Yeah. But I, I inferred that from her, like fearing voice or, or something right yeah but i think she's just having a bad day okay. right um but <laughs> the guy was really funny because he goes he goes uh mom i i have another ride ordered <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically being like can you get uh, the fuck out, get out? Can I, you I, cry I, outside I, of my car <laughs> <laughs> That makes me so happy. <laughs> she's good. She's good, all right. Good. She's, she's good. But you know what's funny, though? It's funny you say the downtown thing. I did think from like, and it's, this is the truth is you'll never understand. What someone's going through in a moment, Yeah. it doesn't matter if it's not that bad. They were just like, she, I think she's just having a bad day. It took her all the way in the wrong direction. She's running late for the little girl's birthday. It's a little girl's birthday. It's probably only going to last for another half an hour. Right, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> so I think she was just having a flustered moment and that you know brought up the emotions but what's funny about that is that like it'll never translate to you to understand because like she was like oh i don't even know where i am i don't know what and then she like asked she found the closest address or whatever and then i'm like oh i thought you were in like a tobacco or something like that right you're just you're downtown yeah, yeah, like, yeah you know but she's not anywhere close to here no 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 no, no. not not even close okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> more, I'm more really upset that I have to figure out when to cut the video because we, st I paused this. Yeah. But that was still running. But that was still running. Yeah. So I got to cut the video at some point. I put on a nice little show while you were gone. Oh, good. I'm yeah, glad so. I get to cut that out. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, oh, why is this working offline? Oh, and I just realized because, uh, we did that. I had... I don't know where they went. There was something. I'm not getting internet down here. I don't know about you, but wherever nope. we went, I had all these notes to talk about on our podcast, and I've now realized they've disappeared, and it says you're you're working offline or something. They're all gone. I don't know what else I was going to talk about. Uh, no, I do. I do know one thing, yeah. and I'll bring this up anyways. Uh, so I had a mildly awkward interaction with Mitchell Alvis. Okay, where? Uh, I, the Groove Bar, not far from here. Recently? Recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've decided to infer he's still a little annoyed with us. Sure. Uh, he seemed fine when I saw him last. Um, Me too. My la this is not the last time I saw him. This is the time before. Oh, the time before. I saw him at Keys okay, recently, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he just said hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was fine. Yeah, that's fine. But um, it was so funny because... It was when we recorded with uh, the twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it hadn't come out yet. It hadn't come out yet. <laughs> yeah, and 
Mitch's opening joke was exactly uh, <laughs> what they complained about. What they complained uh, about. <laughs> he I, was like going on about, my girlfriend's a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and Brandon kept turning around and looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> they were there. And we were laughing. <laughs> we were like, I'm killing. <laughs> I felt bad because like I did feel bad because I consider Mitch like like a buddy, uh, it's a friend, yeah, yeah. It's a buddy, you know, pal, friend and friend of the podcast. Yes, yeah. so I don't want to just like it felt mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes like we we pick on each it other, did. like and it's mean, but you know it's fun. It's on jest, but this it, it felt like almost talking behind someone's back type of shit but it was hilarious yeah yeah, yeah oh i see yeah it was mean girl <laughs> shit it was a little mean girl mean shit but girl we were having shit. fun <laughs> because he opens with that and we had just talked about it oh, on the podcast it was that night it was that night oh yeah. my god that's, that's so funny that's funny um I, I really wish we could play it. i wish you had filmed it and we could play a clip right now right. <laughs> and uh also a couple of guys when i showed up just like <laughs> just qu- they just quit on on stage. What? They're, they're they're set. They're like, I I'm sorry. Like that's the worst when they oh, apologize. Yeah, no yeah. one's laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're up there struggling, and they go, oh, I'm just gonna cut this one short, guys. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> and we were talking about how I was heckling Chris Moose or whatever. I don't know who that is. He's he's an up and comer. Okay, he's yeah, on yeah. the wall, uh, a Keys Comedy Club. He bombed. And he did the, I'm just going to get off, I'm sorry. We mentioned why he got mad at me was because of his knock-knock joke or whatever. Yeah, that yeah, I yeah. guessed what, what it was going to be. <laughs> as, he's, <laughs> as he's like, <laughs> as he's collapsing on stage, I wanted to just go, knock-knock. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it Because I realized when I'm a piece of shit heckler, yeah. I'm in blackout mode. I'm, in, I'm blacked out of alcohol. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're dr- I'm, I'm, th- I'm really drunk. Oh, like, I thought you meant like when you're heckling, you you forget to think about what you're actually. No, doing. no, no, I, no. I realize you're, you're, I'm, you only heckle when you're really when drunk. I'm so drunk. Right, right, right. Because I go, uh, this is all this is all about me. <laughs> 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 That's the blackout brain that I have. Yeah. Lee Fernandez is convinced that he lives in the Truman Show, yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not trying to leave the Truman. No, you're not trying to leave. You no. are happy being the center. You know oh, when Ed Harris goes and's like, would you really want to leave? You'd yeah. be like. Like, fuck no. No. <laughs> Hell no, Ed yeah. Harris. <laughs> Fine. I'll stay, but find me a hotter wife. <laughs> Fucking whatever that woman was. She was a bore. Yeah, she was. And she wasn't even that attractive. No, she like, she that was attractive. like the pretty blonde. But there's something about that version of pretty blonde no. that just does just nothing for me. But I think that was meant in casting of that movie. Was she supposed to be? Because remember, she gets replaced by his high school girlfriend wanted to tell him the truth. Yeah. And she gets replaced by this other woman later who's a famous actress. I just forget her name. And that woman, I think the whole point of her was to be Stepford YV and like weird. And always uh, sponsoring. Yeah. yeah, their, yeah. Uh, it was you a know, great like, movie. It was a really it's good a movie. great movie. Uh, there's a deeper meaning to the Truman Show, they say, where Truman represents the everyman. And Ed Harris is the devil, basically. Oh. Just like controlling like our that. lives or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, without knowing it. And we really are living in a simulated, like a studio. And at any point, if we ever want to get out of it, just like when Truman gets on his boat and he's like uh, floating towards freedom and that big like storm hits him. Yeah, yeah. Meant to kill him. Sure. That's what all of us have to face once we want to break free from the Matrix. It's not going to be easy. You will have uh, SWAT coming through your door. Yeah, you will yeah. have people coming after you. If if you get targeted as somebody who's like, he's figured it out. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, guy yeah. who, like when people invent things that don't require fuel or don't require, require electricity per se, do you become a big target on some like deep level government agency? Like, like this guy has to die. Once you reach that level... Uh, they come after you like they did Truman because not, there is no real freedom in this life, fellas. I get what you're folks. saying. Folks, I'm not even behind. I'm 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 not against what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I'm I I like the sentiment of that movie. If that was the point, right? I will say, when you said when they're trying to invent things without fuel, I'm like I'm with him, right? 
Yes, because we're dependent on that oil companies, stuff like that. When you said they're trying to invent things that don't require electricity, I'm like that. There's nothing that we invent that doesn't require. No, what I mean by that is like you how everything well, bicycles, you fucking idiots. No, like how everything is connected, and we have to pay the electricity, the uh, power companies. There are people who, with a, a fucking two empty Coke bottles. And like a battery and some like little yeah, moving with batteries, magnet thing. electricity. But it's not the electricity. You just mean that on I the, grid. the grid. The grid. The grid. Yeah, grid. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but let me finish the. the oh, but well, you were right to attack me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's about fine. Electricity. That's fine. I'm like tables. What? <laughs> and I'll bet anybody listening picked up on it like you did <laughs> i was like this guy's an this asshole guy's an yeah <laughs> okay but i'm with you okay the grid yeah getting off like we're being connected to they're yeah. not gonna let you go that easy so this was the mitchell story was basically it's not much to it but it was just like i go to the groove bar and uh i'm with my girl she's kind of sitting at the side table or whatever um and i see mitchell and I kind of I, I heard he was a little annoyed about what some of the stuff that was said by Nebin on that podcast or whatever. I felt bad. I consider him a friend. So I'm like, I'm definitely going to sit with this guy. I'm not going to bring it up, but I'm just going to be like, you know. Pretend like, like it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way I live my life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to address things. Um, but so I sit with him and he's cool, whatever. And it takes me a while to realize he's a little sauced, right? He's a, he's, he's a little drunk, right? And I just bring up, uh, we're talking a bit, going fine. But then I bring up the Charlie gets choked out video. I'm like, oh, did you see our video? It's really funny, right? I'm not self-promoting. I'm just saying like that video is going to always make me laugh. The video is always going to make me laugh. It's my favorite edit ever, (laughs) right? And I bring it up and I can tell the mention, or at least in my opinion, Mitchell, correct me in the future if I'm wrong, but the mention of the podcast. Yeah kind of clicked a little bit yeah. like oh i don't want to hear about that stupid and then as i'm telling him about the video he goes wait shut up i let's talk about something else than this boring story and then i go the rest of this conversation is not going to go well for you <laughs> <laughs> and then i could see he saw it in my face like you don't nobody it's not you it's nobody just talks like that to me and like i'm just going to be like oh well, okay. I guess I'm boring, yeah. you know. Like, why would I listen to you then? There's good no call. <laughs> yeah, good call. Good point. More interesting person. You tell me. Right. Um, but yeah, no, he, it, he just it bugged him. Yeah, it bugged. I so that's when I saw it was the reaction to that because that didn't. It was uncalled. But then I also realized he was he was a little drunk, and I the next time I saw him, he was I just cool. find it funny that in the last few episodes or whatever, like the mention of Mitchell. How much he was mentioned, yeah, makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. nothing's pre-planned. Like, oh, we're gonna like make fun of Mitch or no, trash no, no. me. No, nothing. But <laughs> the fact that he kept I, getting brought up some somehow but he's makes like, me laugh. I think on our podcast he could become like he's like our our Bobby Kelly or Voss. Like, yes, you do make fun of him, but he also makes fun of other people when he's on. It's just a normal thing. Uh, sure, I, I mean, uh, and again, I don't... <laughs> you don't want to give a Bobby Kelly your fuss. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just trying to say, I um, I, I have no... Uh, with Mitch yeah, uh, yeah. and what we t- discuss on this shit, uh, I don't have any ill... In, like, I, I like him, yeah, but yeah. he's like anybody else. I just look at it like, if you are willing to step into the comedy scene and try to be a funny person and try to be a comedian... And you talk to us, you're, you're kind of like you're 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 just available to a to to, to to talk about like anybody who puts themselves out there for whatever reason, whether it's comedy, music, art, uh, motivational speaker. If you're putting yourself out there, yeah, yeah, you are letting yourself become a source of of a topic. Like you, you like people could talk about yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if if there was a podcast, like. Monica Gross and Hannah Valdoon have a podcast, and if they okay. just decided to talk about me and trash me, yeah, yeah, yeah. as I, well they should. I, I would just, I'd laugh. I, I would just accept it, depending on what they say. I may not like, it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, hey, like, I put myself out there enough to be talked about. Yeah, yeah. So it's to me, it's fair. 
But, you know, we've talked about people on this podcast that I absolutely hate. And I say that I hate them. Sure. And, you know, I'll say that till the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> There's no growth possible for those people. I, I can't imagine it. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I'm just like, I can't imagine how that would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not interested and I doubt they are, you know, in rectifying or or fixing things. It would have to happen by accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever hate somebody? But you're yes. kind of mushed into this situation together where by the end of whatever the fuck that was, you're kind of like, he's not such a yeah, bad guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe not hate, but there was people that I wasn't crazy about, like comics. Yeah. And the you're stuck at a mic or something like that with them. And eventually the people, I'm talking to you and you're talking to him. And then I'm like, oh, now we're in a conversation together. And that goes fine. And then I go, uh, I guess he's not. I've so said funny. it before. Shanti Maraostica. Yeah. I never disliked because she was nice to me. Mm. She was always nice to me, but I hated what she represented. Like her whole dyke woke, like sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. gatekeeper bullshit. I hated that. I mean, but trans woke, cause she's whatever. Not a dyke. I, oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just correct. Sorry, go on. I hated her penis, um, and <laughs> but she was nice to me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, and then everybody who I get along with are just like, oh, she's such a fucking this and a fucking that. And they hate her. And I have to stand around going like, she's nice to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's cool. I, I wouldn't say cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like we hang out. And she's such an awesome person. Like I said, I hated everything she represented. Yeah, yeah. But she was nice to me. You know what I mean? It's almost like I like Al Val. Yeah. Yeah. But I could never be friends with him. Like I could never be long term. Yeah. Like, like close, because his lifestyle or like how he is would just conflict. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I would say something that that would upset. Yeah. yeah he yeah, wouldn't yeah. like, and it would just create a big issue. So I'm like, I like Al Val, uh, like as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, because of what he is, uh, I I know we can't really be friends because I I just. I would fuck it up. Yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah, ruin yeah. it You'd because say something. Yeah, 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 I would say something fucked up that they would like, and you know, it's uh, I, I don't want to have to always like walk on eggshells with somebody, you know, and support their delusion. Yeah, yeah I yeah. would rather be around other people who share the same delusion I have <laughs> of I'm a funny comedian with no drug or alcohol problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather be around people like that who are also enabling sociopaths. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not like to me, Al Val's crazy. Uh, people that I hang out with are crazy, but it's just like we all share the same sickness. It just has different different versions. Faces. Yeah, 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 yeah. So me going like, oh, I think Al Val's mentally ill uh, isn't like a slam on anything specific. I just I just recognize it as that. And honestly, being trans, let's be honest. Yeah. Having it be also kind of like considered a mental illness is kind of cool. Like if you're considered mentally ill, why is that so bad? No, that's yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool yeah. to be mentally ill, a dangerous. Yeah, and, and you just own it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'm fucking awesome. crazy. It is great being mentally yeah, ill. Yeah. So it's why, awesome. like, when you call that shit that, like, oh, that's a mental ill, they get so offended. Like, then you know what? That's the only thing that makes it kind of interesting across the board. Yeah, across yeah. the board. You wearing heels and, and and still having a dick, that's not that impressive or fascinating to me. It's just kind of gross and weird. Yeah. But the fact that you're out of your mind is cool. It's cool. I think that's cool. Yeah, you think that's cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's just like you gotta. So again, I I I, I like Al Val as a person. I wish him all the best. Um, <laughs> 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 I fucking that's my favorite Al Val joke when he did the Chinese man accent or yeah. Chinese man as a Japanese man yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, last thing I wanted to talk about uh, before we go is uh, you went to I heard because I, I missed it is the uh, opening of a new comedy club Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, well, how, that's the, what I was going to ask. A how soft how open for the soft Royal, yeah. uh, uh, well, which is now Zesty to, Burger. Zesty yeah. Burger, but well, the Royal 
it's I spoke to him. I, I did run into him, uh, Rob. Yeah. Um, who's going? Who's down to be on our podcast? He's yeah. He's supposed to be on a, uh, Monday, but I was uh, in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, to be named. That's what he told me. He's still figuring out the name. But for now, formerly the Royal Comedy, what will be something else? You went to the soft opening. How was that? What uh, was it? Was it full on shows or? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was pretty full. Uh, with no, I didn't audience mean full member. like audience. I just meant full, like it was. Did it a whole comedy show or no? Like, that's what I'm saying. It was it, it was it was a it was a comedy show. Okay, yeah, yeah. The guy, they had on um, what's it called? Yeah, they had on like Finn. They had on Izzy, Liam, uh, Jacob, Rob was on. Yeah, it was a great show. It, it, it was all funny. Audience Liam. loved it. Liam's mm. dead. No, Andrus. <laughs> He's still real to me, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I know. Liam Andrews, yeah, I figured. No, they all did great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a fun fucking show. Cool. It was, looked very promising. I like the way they set it up. Yeah, I heard he moved it around. Yeah, it's like up against, you know how like the, the original It's more like stage. back room, how you go, that's what I understood it in my head. No, it, yeah, I, I think it, it'll do good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just, I guess, one show at a time and try to put on the best show possible. Yeah. And no, I, I no, I'm excited for it. I, I from what Rob said and everything like that, there's like a an excitement to it. <laughs> I just want to also mention one thing before I guess we stop recording. Yeah. But remember, we went to that baseball game recently with Josh and yeah, Father's yeah, wife, yeah. and I was gonna mention that too. Yeah, <laughs> at one point you're supposed to meet me at the flight deck. Yeah. I'm like, I'm at the flight deck. As soon as I hung up, I looked at Vince like, you want to just leave and, <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. just, and just make Sanger come here for nothing? That doesn't and make, then we just left. <laughs> that doesn't make me that mad because <laughs> I went to the wrong area anyway. Yeah. So you guys were waiting. Like, even if you had stayed, you would have been waiting. Way too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas, like, it would just be funny if he shows up and we're not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the one. Let's just mention it. Shout out to Neil the Nutman for pulling a fucking piece of shit move. <laughs> And accepting tickets to the game. <laughs> we invited Neil to come watch a baseball game with us. He said okay. So we sent him the ticket. He says he can't come anymore and then accepts the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Neil, you the nut piece man. Of shit. Piece of I shit. I love you. You're great. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Fuck you, Shaker. You suck. <laughs>